behalf of IEEE Globecom 2014, Pakesh, we'd like to give you this uh, memorial uh, plaque. And thank, thank you, you very much for your support of Globecom as well. Absolutely. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now uh, let's start like that. Did you know that uh, 5G wireless goes beyond smartphones? Well, we are going to hear, let's hear from the person who just got Industrial Innovation Award yesterday. More than 180 granted U.S. patents in the area of wireless. He is IEEE Fellow, Huawei Fellow, and he's Head of Wireless Research and Head of Communication Technologies of Laboratories of Huawei. Let me, without taking his time and your time, welcome Dr. Wen Tang, please. Thank you. Good morning, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, my talk will be about what is 5G and how to define 5G and what is the challenge for 5G. So 5G in four years ago, uh, people will say there's no 5G. And then today, 5G is a hot topic, not only in the academia research, but also in the industry. So. Uh, where is the 5G will lead us in another 10 years? That is what uh, we are talking today. But it is still in the early stage. 5G today is L as LT in 2004. So at the time, not many people, even 3G is just not commercialized. The LT uh, research level at 2004, that is the st status I see today as a 5G. So from the longer time scale, the first huge success of this industry is the combination of the radio and mobile technology with the telephony technology. That is the achievement of a, a GSM network. So GSM network, because of a success of only one service, that is a voice. And GSM doesn't create a voice service, just simply to move the fixed voice service into the mobility network that make a huge success. So then the opportunity at that time, 2000, uh, 1997 or 1998, the people was talking about, can we combine the mobile network with the internet service? So then there's a 3G entry. But unfortunately, we, don't, we as a mobility industry don't understand internet very well. So we made a few attempts. The first one is the basic 3G, uh, CDMA, uh, 1X, or uh, 3GPP. So at the time uh, uh, is that we, we were thinking that 10 times more speed than GSM will allow us to access the internet. But in reality, it is not true, and the technology foundation is not also correct, because it basically it's a power controlled uh, channel with a circuit switch. And then there's coming to HSPA, uh, a version of the 3G, that will get another times, 10 times of uh, faster uh, to, to start to access the internet. The service is not pervasive and not launched uh, in a very big impact because we are missing so-called a killer application. So there never killer application come. There's only one device that changed the world, which is the iPhone. So in the process, the change in the technology and the evaluate and the try to aiming the internet access. 
in additional to the voice service, this additional service as one universal service at a time we thought is internet access. So then we come out with the LTE. So LTE, I think, is finally right to do the internet access that we have here in the US already. Very, very early commercialization, huge success globally in 2009. So the, another beauty of LTE is what I heard from Huawei deployment of more than hundreds of network is a very simple tuning on the network. It's almost a couple of months the network will reach the uh, highest performance rather than the, uh, the, U, uh, the CDMA technology that need a tune network two to three years to the optimal. Another big change is because the smartphone that access the internet, the amount of the heat uh, two years ago already exceed from the PC, meaning it is a clear that the trends so far we do is the smartphone uh, supersede the PC access the internet. The access the internet, probably the only way today is the, is the mobile phone, and we're in the year of 2024 billion or six billion people will use this device. That's the 3G and 4G at the moment where we are with, with uh, the success. So going to 5G, now it is not internet access that we see that 5G will bring us. It is much more diverse service and it's also fundamental transformation as we see from the voice to the internet says is not a mobile internet for 5G only, but it's a connected world. It is a loaded word with this connected word. It, it, it does mean, what does it mean, connected word? That will define 5G, and this is a, most of my talk will about. It is not a simple, faster smartphone or better LTE, because we will deal with some other uh, new, new type of service or, or market or service that, that is not uh, enabled today uh, by 3G or 2G. So it is this, the connect, more ambitious, connect everything. So that's, that's, pro, that's the first definition of the 5G. So how large is the 5G? So just remember these few five numbers. That's what the, uh, the key message of the talk. And when we talk about this number for past, past two years or three years, uh, it was a, a very confused message, but now it is almost industry consensus. So this network will 1,000 times larger uh, capacity than today we have in the LTE network, and 100 times faster, and the device accessibility is 10 uh, gigabits per second. That's already defined. That means you will basically have the wireless uh, experience as a fiber. And then there is a connectivity that 100 times more connectivity compared to the people of the connection. So I will, I will discuss this in more detail, how that connectivity will create a different uh, 5G networks. And the more important is also the latency. That latency also drives uh, uh, beyond the human per perception that human interaction with the network. And it's 10 times faster than machine internet networks. Of course, there is an energy uh, that will uh, change the whole architecture and the, and the network for the deployment. So in a nutshell, from this point of time, in, uh, 5G is continued evolution of mobile broadband service based on the cellular network. That requires another uh, 100 times more throughput. So the challenge for the technical community remains the spectrum efficiency a higher spectrum efficiency. It is a mix of the technology as we, we have the recipe before, you know, 3G to, 2G to 3G is close to 1,000 times to LTE jumping that stage. So you have the mix of the technology, network architecture, and the right design in order to achieve that. So 5G, which is new, is a cellular-based IoT. 
that is a wide area IoT with a global coverage. It's not some IoT in a room or in a certain campus. It is the global scale of IoT. So the third aspect that is very hot in the uh, research community is to utilize the higher uh, band uh, uh, frequency spectrum, in the, in, namely in the millimeter wave range. So this is a, a new ground we need to break. So the last one is all the network will be virtualized and network function will be virtualized and it will be software defined and it is a very different network that you can do arbitrary topology uh, change based on the service, which we have previous generation, one topology uh, defined for the network. So you have one constant architecture. So this one is more elastic. So uh, getting to more detail, that how we define 5G. So the, what it looks like. So before, what we only, uh, the, the flagship of the generation is the speed. So now we have many more uh, uh, requirements coming into with this uh, diverse service I talked before. Very high end media, very, uh, you know, uh, the uh, tiny sensor work, and a very high accuracy control signaling. Uh, not only the internet access, very fast response. So this type of thing, we need to lump up together. So it looks like we need add another two dimension in the, in the picture of the 5G. That is, instead of the, uh, the speed in the horizontal, we need to add the, the length of the vertical and also the latency of the vertical. If we put into this picture, we'll immediately find that 3G and 4G network cannot scale to the corner of this cube, meaning that if there is a variable service in that cube, the fundamental design of 3G and 4G cannot scale to that corner. In fact, the 4G and 3G network is designed for only two parameters, average spectrum efficiency, average cell spectrum efficiency. That's what the center T key parameter that we designed. So in order to scale to the corner cases, which are very important cases that we can see the, uh, the, the new generation will enable Internet of Things, vehicular uh, networks, uh, smart life of the networks. For example, that I just quote a few. Uh, if you put a map of the 3G and the 4G uh, uh, KPIs, a lot of important cases are not there. And then we don't have as one of a couple of KPI to, to optimize the entire network. So this network has to be very dynamically, let's say, virtualized, being abstract by the application. So that will have a very uh, uh, de software definable uh, physical layer that is not done before. So this is a one top level of the view that network will come in. Uh, at this early stage, also we need to pay a very important attention is the spectrum shortage uh, for the 5G. So uh, for the estimation, if we have a high growth or lower growth, that's the spectrum we need uh, for 2020, one gig, uh, point, 1 gig, 1.3 gig or 1.9 gigahertz. But they look at the spectrum allocation of various uh, global region of the countries uh, that we are far away, very slow in terms of release spectrum or regulatory, uh, at least halfway, very big gap. So there's only one mechanics uh, that can coordinate this, this World Radio Congress, and they work for every four years. So this is a one of a very uh, uh, serious top one barrier uh, for the 5G at the moment, technical barrier. So the second one is higher efficiency. Um, I want uh, sort of use this opportunity to uh, raise this point again. Efficiency, especially the spectrum efficiency, is again a very challenging uh, techni technology challenge for us because the mobile broadband is the bread button for the 5G also. Without a 10 or multiple, uh, you know, more than 10 times efficiency, there is no investment. Uh, for the 5G network, where to get that efficiency. So this is a very difficult problem because 
phi is dead or radio is dead and there's not much of the thing we do the, uh, the phi. So that we need really new thinking and breakthrough in this area. Uh, the 5G will require a clean slate design. Um, otherwise, it is LT evolution and there will be have a problem we talked about before. Uh, then it need a big gain and it's below six gigahertz is still uh, very critical to launch the 5G and the micro cell uh, the asset and the, with the, uh, you know, the increment, the adding of the Internet of Things. So the spectrum efficiency is, uh, is the uh, number one uh, technology challenge for, for the 5G research today. That's, a, that's my point of view. And then I will um, drive into another two new directions for 5G. In order to make my case, I will give you a very simple calculated example uh, to, see, to show how, what is the potential for 5G. Internet of Things. So how many sensors, how massively connected sensors that can bring into a 5G network, the cellular based network I'm talking here. So uh, the, with different view, like a few years ago, people were envision 50 billion or 20, 30 billion. That is, that is based on the calculation of a gadget. Uh, six billion of a people, then 10 gadgets, that's more or less that number. But then we are look, getting to another different world, meaning that it's not people gadget, it's that the people, every other thing will be connected. So this is a very large scale of connectivity, how to do it, and why the previous generation cannot do it. So I will, I will just show you one example. Uh, of the design. So first of all, let's say 12 bytes of a sensor. It's all information that needed and very low period of time to go to back to the network of the Internet of Things. And the key is very, very narrow band designs, not wide band design. So this type of waveform, there are a lot of good research in 5G of us. Is, is enabled and the, the, you know, the very good filter bank technology. So very narrow band, few kilohertz, let's say, take three, some kilohertz on this. Uh, very different than the design we have before. And then if we have one megahertz spectrum, let's say 800 megahertz spectrum per sector, in that format, we will have 3.7 million sensors reading per hour, read the sensors, uh, in one sector, in the microcell site, very simple example, so we will have 11 million sensors reading. So imagine there's a, like one square kilometer, you can have 11 million of the sensor into the network. Now if we compute, if we have 5 million globally micro base station, then it will be 50 trillion of sensors read out per hour. It will be 900 billion sensors reading per minute. So this is the power of Internet of Things, that you change another different design with a totally different model. That's the, that's the scale we can reach. And it will be, uh, as we roll out of 4G globally, you have this uh, Internet of Things Foundation to connectivity. So that's the link that, uh, that uh, uh, I will show you with the 5G. Only one megahertz of a property of a spectrum. The second thing is the zero latency. That is very critical for control uh, the things. So for this scenario, you have a lot of cars. If those cars are, are, are controlled by the cloud, so then you can, uh, you can do very optimized uh, you know, who is getting where and, uh, you know, the, which lane you should on which part and very, very speed, uh, very efficient way to do this. Then you can imagine many, many cases and uh, uh, get her, uh, show a nice video that, uh, that even more imaginary uh, for this if it is happens. Now let's do the similar calculation, how we should design this network. So, <coughs> again, if it is 12 byte com control command, you know, this I have to get some uh, car industry uh, confirmation. They have some different format of signaling. One millisecond response. So 
that means at, at minimum we need uh, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, round trip response of one millisecond, five, five, five megahertz with some redundancy you need. That's the unit of spectrum we consider. And then at, this is a very important for 5G, at 120 kilometer per hour, if you use cloud control the car, so we will have one millisecond response, we'll have a three centimeter error. That is okay, but if you have 10 milliseconds, then your car will like a drunk the car with almost three meters error, very uh, dangerous of driving scenario. So that how critical to get into that one millisecond response. And then micro site, let's say the same calculation we do, assume 20 cars per site, that's, that's a being able to control, and then we need a 40 meg of a spectrum, and this 40 meg of spectrum with five, mi five, five million micro sites uh, in the global size, uh, we will have 400 million automated to drive the car global wise. So I think it's uh, more than 40, 30% uh, of a car uh, in the world that can do that if we have uh, 40 megahertz of a spectrum, very good spectrum, for example, 700 megahertz spectrum. Although uh, this is a calculation that not include uh, the security, the spectrum efficiency, and also the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the reliability. And that means you cannot have a one single command of an error of the control, then you will, you will have uh, caused a lot of other things. So these are the two examples that 5G potentially can be massively uh, deployed and changed compared to uh, mobile broadband access. Uh, my last example is the ultra-reliability communication. So uh, the ultra-reliability can be, in my view, uh, the three dimension, for example, the links and the latencies and the speed. Ultra-reliability can be built on top of this uh, as an enhancement feature. Uh, because we stop the reliability in the uh, uh, 3G and the 4G design because the packet error rate let's say, uh, initial access 10%, and then the rent level at the 10 to the minus 6%, at, uh, you know, that, that level is good enough for the, for the uh, internet traffic. But then, for this type of reliability, is, uh, is one error will cause disaster. So that is more reliable we need to do. The, the simple trick is that you lower, keep lower your spectrum efficiency, uh, you know, put more energy to the signal. Uh, but uh, give you one perspective that we may need to design not 5.9, even 6.9, because that means every year downtime is about 30 seconds. So in this, much, in this environment, uh, uh, probably the starting point is 6.9. How to design this 6.9? Uh, that's a, one of the uh, basic questions that will in also very responsible, responsible way that immediately control command with no error. So this is a one uh, big, uh, big question uh, for the 5G design. We don't have solution on this yet. And I will point in one flaw in 3G and 4G that the, uh, the coding we are using, like the turbo codes, is basically stop at a flaw of uh, probably three, four nines at the level. So that is a fundamental uh, problem for the, for the coding that doesn't matter how you throw many repetition or how uh, higher energy you transmit, you will have that error rate level. So this is a, uh, the, uh, the aspect, for example, for the ultra-reliable uh, communication in the, in the 5G. Um, there are a lot of work start, research effort to start to um, look what will be 5G looks like, the, especially the physical layer. So this is the, uh, the picture we have today that uh, the concept of the, uh, the physical layer is not OFDM uh, based the signal uh, because the fundamental construction for the 4G is that we need a uniform orthogonality and the one computing platform for the FFT 
and with strict synchronization of the different kind of a service and the mapping of the resource, that limits lots of the application for this. So the, the framework we are proposing are these things. It's a two layers of orthogonality uh, and the synchronized free structure to enable Internet of Thing, the, the, the thing that beyond the MVB. So the first layer is using, for example, the filtering technology to de, de make uh, orthogonal interblocks orthogonality. So the, the technology will be called a filter OFDM. So there are paper on this, and uh, uh, several forums are also have a similar work on this. So meaning that you, you, you apply filtering on the resource block to decouple all these blocks uh, as enable to have a uh, synchronized free and also decoupling uh, the, the scalability. Meaning some of the block can use ultra narrow band, some of the block can use very, very high, uh, you know, the intercarrier speed for handling the large speed. And some of them can use the indoor very, very small uh, cyclic fix, prefix, and some of them can use very large for broadcasting cyclic freak, prefix. They all harmonize in the one design if we have the interblock non orthogonality. So then intra-block of a non orthogonality we, ex we need to explore additional dimension. That means the dimension more than orthogonality, that's where your spectrum efficiency will come out with the uh, first basic step. So in that case, the so-called sparse code, uh, multiple access of the signal that is very hopeful, uh, that make a very low latency, large amount of uh, the links of connectivity available and a very high uh, spectrum e efficiency will be enabled on this. So the two layers, non orthogonality that's uh, you know, the framework we see the most hopeful uh, air interface concept. Uh, then uh, from Huawei point of view, we have a uh, lot of investment on the early research. These are the areas we have a very good progress for the, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, by the end of last year. Uh, air interface, full duplex, uh, the uh, a very capable base station, you know, uh, 50 to 100 gig of a base station. Eventually, the base station can reach uh, 0.5 or terahertz, terabits per, le per second level. And then virtualized radio, that means pure software uh, till to the end of a physical layer. And then the uh, millimeter wave, we have the record of transmission of 100 uh, gigabits per second of, uh, of, uh, of the millimeter uh, 70, uh, e, the full E-band uh, transmission. That, that is a, uh, uh, the first uh, real-time traffic goes through that piece of a spectrum with this very high speed. Okay. Uh, then, uh, we will have a booth uh, over the, uh, you know, the exhibition, and these are technology you can go there to see uh, the, you know, the Huawei expert will, will explain more detail to you on uh, the, this beginning phase of the 5G, and this, uh, this is uh, the, uh, 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 you, you will get more detailed information over there. Uh, last, so, uh, there is a very strong global momentum uh, to move 5G forward and to go to the market. Uh, there will be early uh, technology trial and showcases, and very uh, symbolic one are the Olympic Games for 2018, uh, Winter Olympic in Korea, and also 2020 uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, the Summer Olympic Games in, in Tokyo. So these are the early uh, version of the uh, 5G. And for Huawei wise, uh, we announced the two other events, uh, which is also uh, even larger scale in the uh, 2018 uh, Moscow, uh, uh, you know, the World Cup of football. So we will deploy the 5G technology to show this, uh, you know, 10 gigabits uh, per second of a user experience in the stadium. Uh, for the game, and also 2020 in Dubai, uh, the Expo, uh, that will uh, showcase all the Internet of Things, the 
try to automate the entire expo uh, with the sensors that density were designed for one square meter, uh, 1,000 to 5,000 sensors, that density of, of the internet thing of the connectivity. Um, hopefully, uh, these, you know, uh, the, the ecosystem and uh, the service and all the market will line up in 2020. That's the plan that will launch the uh, 5G uh, service. So in this talk, my message is what is 5G, how to design 5G, and what is the challenge of the 5G. And I also uh, present a few early uh, efforts for the 5G uh, in terms of uh, technology and also uh, where market is going. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. OK. Questions, please. Microphone over there. Over behind. Oh. Andrew. OK. Uh, thank you for giving us a, a good uh, presentation about the field technology, 5G. Yeah, my question about uh, not a technology, but uh, about our consumer. As we know, we use 3G, 4G, we pay like a data fee per, like a $40 per month here, ATT. Well, why is this something like that? When we use like a, a 5G in the future, uh, 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 okay, I call you CTO. So, <laughs> I don't know what's your title. Uh, I call you professor, doctor. Okay, okay. I mean, what can you give us an uh, estimation whether the fee, like a five, uh, when we use the, the data usage fee, will go down or up? Because I care about the, the, the 5G from the consumer's perspective. And uh, I still have another question. Um, if the 5G is so popular in the future, do we still you need the like a global Wi-Fi technology, some technology like that? Yeah, thank you. Okay, you have uh, two questions. The first question is asking the price. So I will answer you as maximum as a CTO, CTO roles I have. Okay, so you won't have your monthly bill doubled or tripled for 5G. There's no business case for that. Uh, it might be the same bill you will have. But that bill will do a lot of things for you. So you might don't need to have a fixed access at home. Okay. So the, because the service and the speed is enough uh, to consolidate things. This is a good, very good example for smartphone. Actually, you consolidated so many applications into one phone. Okay. The business model is changed. If you have an old model per service, per charge, it won't fly. So that model will continue very well understood. For the Internet of Things, the thing I t I'm talking about is uh, some 900 billion, very simple math you will find out. <laughs> For that application, the business model is totally different. So what you have is 10 years like bat uh, battery, uh, $3 or $2 bond cost, I can, I can make sure that is that level. And the upper level is $1 or less. So because you have 100 or hundreds of times more connection, that's where the business is coming. If, even if that will increase the market revenue by 20%, it's a very good news for the mobile industry already. So that's what my first example, sensor type of cellular IoT. There's no additional infrastructure use the cellular as it is today. Okay. Then the autom car driving. So that is a more rosy picture from many people's point of view because uh, actually the insurance part company, when you talk, they are very keen on this. They have a lot of car insurance money. You know, that portion of money you pay will transform into mobile industry and to certain your mobile phone and that level. Uh, so that thing, I don't know, uh, you know, one pocket in, one pocket out. The message is that if you double the cost for everything, there's no, uh, there's no market for that, for sure. Okay. Second question was Wi-Fi. Uh, it is very clear. Wi-Fi will coexist. Wi-Fi will have its own evolution path. Wi-Fi may change some position in the market, but Wi-Fi will be there. I'm going to take 
One more question over there, please. So I have two questions, but they're related. So uh, my first question is, where do you see virtualized radio and full duplex of the technologies that you mentioned fitting into 5G? And then of those same technologies, which ones, if any, will give us this one millisecond latency and 1,000x energy reduction? OK. Uh, the full duplex, uh, we do have it. It is very easy, uh, sort of uh, on the paper that we draw this full duplex. Most, most of them are engineering challenge. And you need a lot of uh, different architectures and the processes and components in order to get that one. So in a summary, in a nutshell, in a Huawei lab, we already have a, a full duplex uh, complete version. The architecture will handle all the environment uh, at the power level of the one watts. So now the question is, what is the time that you raise the power to one watts to a couple of watts, or in 2020, maybe even on the 10 watts level, that will be a technology mature, that I can say. And another good news is the full duplex works for MIMO today. And you can see in, in, in Huawei boats, there are two by two MIMO. And I don't see the fundamental uh, difficult for the four by four MIMO. So works for MIMO also very well in terms of a full duplex. In these two directions, a huge amount of engineering effort need to be done. That in a nutshell, you have a con conventional radio. What you will add is one RFIC and one digital cancellation processor that may be four, three or five times complex than the LTE modem. So that's the price you will pay. Uh, that, that is the uh, full duplex. Virtualization, yes, it will bring the, the energy. Uh, uh, most part will be uh, virtualization uh, that will uh, use the software uh, type of architecture and depends on uh, network architecture. Is a distributed run still there? I think there will be part, old fashion will be there, and there will be centralized run. And then depends on what kind of uh, uh, partition of the network uh, in in the in the data center. Uh, that that's that's where the uh, potentially the big uh, energy uh, saving room is there. Okay, let's thank Dr. Wen one more time before I turn on the. Let's give you a word. Let's give him a clap. Turn on the microphone to Ted for very important announcements. Thank you. Okay, first let's uh, thank Wen Tong and present him this uh, commemorative plaque for not just a great keynote, but also a wonderful support of Globecom 2014. Thank you, Wen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you, Mahmoud, for the keynotes of today. Tomorrow at 8.30, we'll also have